Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Hebrew month. We are in the Hebrew month of IR. The Hebrew month of IR is the second of the 12 months on the, on the Jewish calendar. Um, tonight, I have a lot of notes to read to you. I have a lot of information that insights I want to give to you regarding this month. So it's going to be jam-packed. I'll try and go as quickly as I possibly can because there is a lot here. So I would just first I want to give you some background to the Jewish calendar and its spiritual significance. For those of you who are watching this and are not understanding why the Hebrew months are so important, I'm going to give you some explanations. So, to give us uh, some background to the Jewish calendar and its spiritual significance, first off, God is the one who instituted the Jewish calendar. In Exodus 12, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month of the first of your year and that happened to be last month which was the month of nisan and that's when the jewish people celebrate passover um because that's the time when god that's the month when when god delivered the children of israel out of egypt brought them out of egypt and started to bring them towards where he wanted to bring them to their promised land bringing them through the red sea um and and, and leading them, but with a pillar of fire by night and, um, you know, uh, a cloud by day. So all these wonderful things that God was do started to do for them to reveal, God began to reveal who he was to them in the first month of Nisan. But this is the second month now, the second month of Iyar. All the 12 Hebrew months link together in one way or another one affects the other one builds upon the other one emphasizes the end of a season while another emphasizes the beginning of a season last month was nisan or aviv it starts off the beginning of things it's during springtime it celebrates the new season of spring but it also speaks of growth such as the barley grain coming to full growth which happens in the month of nisan so um and I, I expounded upon that last month about the month of Nisan and the barley wheat coming to full growth. If uh, if you want to look back at that, I do have that recording, that video also. We now come to the second month of Iyar, which has the Hebrew character Vav associated with it. Vav means to link and to connect. This meaning has many layers to it. Uh, as I said, the months link together one way or another and they build upon each other. As you come into an understanding of the Hebrew months and their individual prophetic significance, and as you honor them as God's calendar, he will honor you with insights and understandings that will give you eyes to see and ears to hear him and what he's doing in the earth and, and in his kingdom and in the spirit realm. So, and what his purposes are. You will gain greater insight as you honor the Hebrew months and you go and you learn about them you will gain greater insight to what the kingdom of God is about. Jesus is the manifestation of all those things. All the Hebrew months point to Jesus. And God will give you insights, not just from the Old Testament, but also into the New Testament and many of the things that Jesus did that point, everything points to Jesus, but he's all, Jesus also alluded back to these things also. All the Jewish months have redemptive purposes in them. In one way or another, they all point to Christ, our Redeemer, in one way or another. As you pay attention to each month and their spiritual significance, it'll open you up to sense the hidden things that God's doing in the earth. And we can be a part of that. This leads us to the tribe that's associated with this month. The tribe of Issachar is associated, and they are the tribe that was gifted with the ability to discern the times and the seasons of what God was doing in the earth. First Chronicles 12.32 says, And of Issachar, men who had understanding end of the times to know what Israel ought to do. First Chronicles 12 speaks of David gathering his army together. There were many mighty men of all kinds that gathered together in Dave, on David's behalf to make him king over all of Israel. Now, last month was the beginning. I find this interesting. Last month was the beginning of the season when the kings go out to war. So, Iyar now is shown here to be the month when the armies actually gather together and are to be strengthened and reinforced for battle, getting ready for battle. So, you see how these months link together, how Nisan links with Iyar. In verse 30 to 23, it says, 
These are the numbers of the armed divisions who came to David at Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. This formation of the army came according to a prophetic word. God arms us for battle to bring about change in the earth, and he first speaks it through, speaks it out through basically one of his prophets uh, before it happens. As I mentioned before, the Hebrew character associated with this month is Vav, which means to link and to connect. In 1 Chronicles 12, all 12 tribes of Israel came together to do battle to make David king. They all linked together. They all connected and became as one. And they all had one purpose and they were unstoppable. Also, having the sons of Issachar, they were able to know what the strategy was for that season because there is a different strategy in for, for different seasons. Not um, so not only were they fully, uh, were they in full unity, they were also fully equipped with spiritual insight to know what to do in that particular season. In the month of Nisan, in the month of Iyar, they were ready, they were given insights on how to do battle to make David king. In the book of Acts, the early church was also in one mind and one purpose, and the church grew rapidly. No matter what the religious leaders did or whatever opposition the church faced, the church continued to grow in numbers with great signs and wonders. So the greatest secret to defeat our enemy is unity in the spirit. And that unity in the spirit is by faith. Amen. Notice that in First Chronicles, the Lord gave a prophetic word. Then the formation of the army came to pass. And because God initiated the victory, the victory was pretty much certain. As long as they obeyed the Lord, as long as they stepped out in faith and obedience to God, they would win. There is great strength in unity, but more importantly, unity of the Spirit, of Holy Spirit, being unified in the Holy Spirit. That's how the church grew. They grew in faith, and they grew, and they remained in unity together. And that, that you have to maintain unity. Okay, unity is something to be maintained. It's a, it's an act of the will. It's a choice that we make to believe and to trust that God wants us to be unified. And sometimes we we, we get selfish and we want our own way. But that, that can go against the unity. Sometimes we have to humble ourselves. Sometimes we have to submit ourselves to each other will, willingly, out of love and out of the spirit of and out of the spirit of unity, so that things can, can all work together for the good. With regards to linking and connecting in this month, another characteristic for this month is natural healing and processing of our thoughts. Our thoughts can fight against us, and you we all know that. Especially as Christians, when, when you feel something in your spirit, your mind fights. If, if you feel God's telling you to do something, if you hear something specifically, the mind does fight. So our thoughts can fight against what's going on in the spirit, and they can get us off track if we let it. When you're not unified in your body, if you have not submitted your whole self, spirit, soul, and body, to the Lord, then you can become weakened and vulnerable. Unity creates strength. So we can be actually disconnected and not unified with inside of us. And when we're not connected and unified with the Lord inside of us, we can become weak and vulnerable. And if everybody's like that, then, well, you see what goes on in the body today. There's a lot of disunity in the body. All kinds of factions have taken place. All kinds of doctrinal disagreements and things like that have taken place. And it weakens the body. So daily prayer is a necessary discipline. Bring your emotions and traumas and disappointments and conflicts to the Lord. All your questions, everything. God is our refuge. He's there for us. He wants us to come to him and pour our heart out before him and trust him. We can trust that God is a safe place. So bring out all the conflicts to him. Allow him to show you where things have become disconnected or were never actually correctly connected together inside of us. Here, 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 here. Uh, remember what James said in James in the book of James. It says a double-minded man is, un is unstable in all his ways. That's speaking about unbelief, vacillating between two thoughts and two belief systems. Can't have that. This month is known as the month of radiance. Our being is to be whole and healthy. Therefore, we will radiate that. Amen. A month of IR is a month of transition. This is a big one. Transition, as we could see with Nisan being the beginning of the season when the kings go out to war. In the first appointed Hebrew month by God, the Jewish people were commanded 
to pass over from Egypt and its life of bondage and to start the transition into being prepared to come into the promised land. Nisan was a month of repentance coming out of the old ways of Egypt and leaving it behind. Uh, there was in Passover before uh, the, um, for the Jewish people, the, the, uh, well, it says in the book of Exodus that for in the Jewish homes, every amount of yeast had to be removed. The house had to be cleansed of all yeast, like as if being cleaned of all infection, everything, anything that's dirty had to be removed. That's an act of repentance spiritually for us, removing all the dirt from us and coming before the Lord, asking for forgiveness and cleansing from our sins with his blood and, and ridding ourselves of, of, of any impurities inside of us. That was during Passover. So that was an act of saying, okay, I'm moving out of Egypt and moving on into what God has for me. Become, coming out from among Egypt and being separated from Egypt, becoming holy as unto the Lord by faith. The Jewish people were commanded to pass over from Egypt and its life of bondage and start the transition, being prepared to come into the promised land. Nisan was, Nisan was a month of repentance, coming out of old ways of Egypt and leaving it behind. Now Iyar is the month of linking up and connecting into our future the transition time, transitioning into linking up into. They were unlinked before, now they're becoming linked. They were not linked with God before, now they're com becoming linked. Now, IR is the month of linking up to that. This is the month to ask the Lord how to link up, link, link up and connect with him and learn new ways of thinking, ways of faith thinking. The three different mindsets that we deal with. We deal with the Greek mindset, the barbaric mindset, and the Hebrew mindset. The Greek mindset is the worship of knowledge. Knowledge is, is the end all. The barbaric mindset is they worship fear and manipulation and, and brute strength and power. That's what they worship. The Hebrew mindset worships God. God is the end all. That's where we need to be. We need to have the Hebrew mindset of trusting in God in all things, submitting everything to him, bringing everything in by all prayers and supplication, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Amen. So uh, new ways of thinking. It's a month to leave our mind, to, to have our minds renewed so our minds will connect and link up with the spirit. And then our bodies will manifest the fruit of that. But there are battles to face, typically up here. Doubt. We can, we can, we'll end up battling doubt. We'll end up battling memories of disappointments. We'll end up battling um, intellectualism, battling circumstances that seem the complete opposite to what we feel God wants us to do or to be or where to go. Just as I mentioned before, this is the month when God brought an army together for David. This was a transition month for David as well. He wasn't king yet. But he was heading in that direction, and God was full, had fully equipped him to do so. His battle was to be against Saul, who was still king. But David was called by God to transition from Saul's warrior, his, the head of his army, to becoming king. David sought the Lord and was obedient to the Lord, and God provided mighty men of valor and the sons of Issachar to help him understand what the strategy was for the season. In order for us to transition properly, we must be linked and connected to God by Holy Spirit. David sought the Lord because he had faith in God. He had many an experience with God that produced faith in him to get him through. David was in position for the greatest transition of his life, and there was a battle ahead to fight. If you feel that you're in a transition time, like, in other words, in between the end of something and into the beginning of something, then ask the Lord. Ask for wisdom and insight. This is the month to ask. James 1.5 tells us, if any of you lacks wisdom, now wisdom is know-how, knowing what to do. So if you're in a transition and you're transitioning from the old familiar into something new, what are you supposed to do? You can ask the Lord. He knows what's coming up next. He knows how to navigate because he sees the beginning from the end. So ask, ask him and he will give you the wisdom, the know-how. Let him ask. So it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously and without finding fault. And it will be given to him. This is the month. So this is the month of linking up and connecting for your future in God's kingdom. This is the month to focus on renewing your mind so it will not fight you and will link up with your spirit so your body will follow. 
This is the month to ask for wisdom so God can fully equip you for the battle ahead so that you can transition properly into your next phase of, phase of blessings in him. This is also the month of natural healing. That's a part two. With what I spoke about last month, I, I spoke on um, Psalm 23, where, where it was the, 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 this is the shepherd psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And in that, I spoke about, the, uh, spoke about how it reads. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me, a rod and your staff to comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That table that God has prepared for us, that table has things on it that he's prepared ahead of time on the table. And one of those things on that table is a battle plan. What to do, how to defeat the enemy. And then he calls in his enemies because it says, and you, you anoint my head with oil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So the Lord sh displays you in front of, of your enemies and what how he's going to defeat the enemies, how he and you are going to defeat the enemy. And he anoints our head with oil, covers us with oil, the oil of anointing. We each have an anointing in us so we can defeat the enemy. So this is a transit this in this month is a month of healing too. He restores our soul. He will restore our soul. He will bring us into right right thinking, into a healthier thinking, into a place where we're more receptive by faith to do things, where we're not so bogged down by by doubt and, and hurts and wounds and things that hinder our faith. He's bringing us into the place. I hear this now. He's bringing us into the place of healing. Healing so that we can hear him and receive him more and step out in faith more and take the little steps. As we be faithful in little, we'll be, we can become faithful in much. Amen. This is a month, month of natural healing. Look to the Lord for your healing, but know this, you must submit your spirit, soul, and body to him and get your mind in his word. Just as I, I quoted Psalm 23 to you, I got that inside of me. I studied that, I read that, I meditated on it and it became a part of me. It gets inside of you. When you read the word of God and you pray over the word of God and it's like you chew on it, meditating on it, just praying over it, it becomes a part of you and it can come up at any time, just like it did with me. The word, God's word comes up in me many a times. It just flows out of me because I've meditated on it. I've chewed on it. Like the cow chews on his cud and has all these different stomachs. I got more than one stomach going on inside of me to, to, that chews on the word and meditates on it and, it and it becomes a part of me. Amen. God's word is spirit. So it becomes a part of your spirit. It becomes food for you that can, you can, that can come up again and refeed you. Amen. Re-encourage you, re-strengthen you. That's what the word of God is there for. And it's also to reveal the thoughts and intents of your heart so that sometimes God has to do surgery on us. And the word of God is like a knife. It, the, the word of God is a two-edged sword that, that cuts between soul and spirit and, and joint and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And the purpose of that is to help cut through things, to help us see things that are not good in us. It's also there to help separate the good from the bad so we can see, wow, we do have good things in us and God encourages us that way. But also too, it's to reveal the things, the thoughts and intents of the heart because those things need to be seen for what they are. It, God cuts through, God's word cuts through the thoughts and the intents of the heart and the joint and the marrow gets deep in there, into the spirit man to show what needs to be revealed, cut open. Like if there's, if there's anything, an infection inside, uh, a wound inside that hasn't been healed properly. The word of God can can bring, can help cut away the 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 scar tissue, all the things that need to be cut away, so God could do His surgery inside of us and make us whole again. Amen. This is the month. Okay, of natural healing. Um, now, if we do this with your with your uh, as you submit your spirit, soul, and body to Him and get your mind in His Word, this will also produce faith. And this will get you into position for healings and the freedom from the past of, of, of Egypt's bondages. Just as the children of Israel had to leave Egypt, so we must leave Egypt too. Come out from under those things. So the children of Israel left Egypt. It was the beginning of the transition season for them. <coughs> Excuse me. It, had supposed to be a short, it was supposed to be a short season, but they fought. They fought against the transition by not trusting in the Lord and that generation ended up dying in the desert, except for Joshua and Caleb. 
Joshua and Caleb had faith and believed that God was with them to defeat the giants in their promised land. But like Joshua and Caleb, be like Joshua and Caleb and trust that God will be with us in the battle. Because he is. He doesn't bring us into a battle without equipping us. But it's a step of faith. It's a step into something new. Usually the giant is being in a place of being uncomfortable. Being in a new place that we've never been before. David faced his giants even before he faced Goliath. When David was a shepherd and he was guarding the flock, a, a lion came after him and God showed him how to kill the lion. A bear came after him and God showed him how to kill a bear. So G David already experienced two giants before he ever met Goliath. And when David saw Goliath and saw what he was doing and heard the nonsense that was coming out of David's uh, out of John Goliath's mouth, he was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he's defying the armies of God? So he was, he was like, and they were like, okay, let's get some armor on you. He says, I don't need armor. Listen, this giant is just like the lion and the bear that I killed. There's nothing, there's nothing God can't do. I killed those lions and bears. That should have, I should have died. But because God was with me, I was able to kill those, those, that lion and that bear. And this giant is no different. And then God did the rest. And when he shot that sling and that stone sunk right into the giant's head, killed him, you know that's God. How could a little smooth stone kill a massive man like that? And also, too, understand that when that, when that pebble hit him, when that stone hit him, he had a helmet on. So figure the helmet's probably like this on his head. So it went right here. <laughs> what are the chances of it hitting right there anyway? So anyways, let me get back to this. So this is about faith now. We're getting into faith here. So so Joshua and Caleb, Caleb had believe, had faith and believed that God was to was to be with them and to defeat the giants in their promised land. But like Josh, be like Joshua and Caleb. As I mentioned, James 1.5 earlier, ask the Lord and he will give you wisdom. But there is a second part to that scripture but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave is like is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do the opposite of double-minded is single-minded that means focused so when you pray and you ask god for wisdom Stay focused on that. Don't be thinking, what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? No, you can't be that way. Amen? The children of Israel failed to enter into the promised land because they doubted. And they fought. They grumbled. They murmured. They rebelled because they didn't believe. And they did not believe. And because of that, they died in the desert. How sad. Let's not be like them. Let's not be like them. Let's believe. Let's trust in the Lord. Amen? The second, the secret, I should say, the secret to transitioning into our promised land is to believe, to trust that like David, we can win the battle. David won the battle with Goliath because he knew his God, as I was saying before. He had faith that God would fight for him. Joshua and Cable, C Caleb believed that God would help them defeat the giants. So let's get ourselves positioned this month in, our, in month of IR. Let's get ourselves positioned in this month of IR in faith. Let's link up with God and his promises by faith. Let's connect with him. Amen. Let's connect with him in prayer and in chewing on his word. And let's get ready to enter into his calling and his destiny. So, Father, I pray for this message, Lord, this month of IR, that you'd help us to link up with you, Lord. Remind us to link up with you and connect with you. Let us seek your face, Lord. For, Lord, as your word says, as, as we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So we draw near to you tonight, Lord, in faith, trusting in you and believing in you that you can do all things and that because you do all things, we also can do all things because you are in us and you will work all things out together for the good. And we trust you in this, Lord God. We're trusting you, Lord, to, trans to, to help us to transition from, from coming out of Egypt, Lord God, into the promised land, Lord. And that, Lord, even in this time of transition, that we would not be thinking it just be testing but also that, that we are being positioned, Lord God, that this time in this month, you're positioning, positioning us and trans, to, to transition from the old into the new, Father, from, from Egypt into the promised land. 
So we ask for your help, Lord God, to bring us into that. And next month will be the month of celebrating Pentecost, which is the month of God's provision. Pentecost was the celebration of God's provision. The promised land was God's provision. So, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you position us, help us to transition, to be prepared, ready by faith, to let go of the things that are hindering us, that are that are uh, maybe pulling at us. Um, help us not to doubt. Help us to believe and help us to move forward in you into our promised land, into our destiny, into the next step of our life and, and into the all the blessings you have for us in these Hebrew months and in, these, and in our lives, for as your word says, you blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly. So we receive them today and we ask that you give us wisdom on how to defeat the enemy who would seek to oppose us during this transition time. Because transition time is a, is a place of vulnerability. It's a place of vulnerability. It's a place of being going from something old and familiar into something new. And it's a vulnerable place and the enemy will seize the opportunity to try and do harm, to, to try and cause us to go backwards. So Lord, give us wisdom. Give us the strategy we need to move forward, to defeat the enemy in this time, in Jesus' name, amen. So next month we'll be going into, I believe it's the month of Savan, um, which will be we'll be celebrating Pentecost. So we're these next these these three months, Nisan last month, Iyar this month, and and then the next month. These are um, these are very significant months. Uh, springtime is one thing. Those these all have prophetic significance. So uh, I pray blessing over you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.